want to share a couple things with you real quick. I went back to the doctor this week, and uh, it was the neck doctor, and basically all they could tell me this time was the two bones are still in perfect shape. So that's what he was looking for. They haven't moved, and that's a good thing. He couldn't tell about the healing yet on the bones, but I go back in a month, run some more, another x-ray, and he said he'd be able to tell more about whether it's growing. And then I got to do a CT scan, be the first of the year, and he said he can tell for sure from that. But you want to pray that that, that, that bone is growing. That's what we got to do now. As long as it's growing, it's in place, we'll be okay. So that's your prayer. And your other prayer is that that when we take this thing off, that I'll have the neck movement that I need. Because I tried to tell him, I said, well, can I start driving? And he said, when we get it off, and you said, and then we don't know if you're going to have the movement. That'll all be tested then. So that's your, you know how to pray for me. Just keep praying that God will work it all out. And the other thing is, I want to, I just want to thank the church. We had the supper down here the other night, and we fed 170 people, huh? 173 people, not counting the workers. There was about 50 workers. So we fed all of them that night, and it was an, an unbelievable experience. And it, it thrilled my heart just to see all those people out there, little children especially, and we could, we could look at them and, and go give them something to eat, and we waited on hand and foot. I went to every one of them that night and spoke to them, and I said, now y'all just sit here and have fun, and we're going to serve you with everything tonight. And we did, and they did. So thank you, church, for, for letting this happen. Thank you for all you workers. It was unbelievable. I think it's the best we've ever had. I, 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 we have so many good ones, but I really think it was the best. The, the, the teamwork was just unbelievable. We, we guys that we had out there cooking the turkeys, that went so good that we finished an hour early. And you don't know what that means, but I'm telling you, I was surprised. And it, you, when, when you get it right and you have the right attitude, things work. On the inside, they were doing so much that, you know, it, w it was unreal. You ladies did an unbelievable job. So thank you. Looking forward to next year and just helping somebody else and let them enjoy Thanksgiving like they never have before. So thank you all, and we sure love you. And, and, and I love you. I'm not getting to tell all of you, but nothing's changed. I love you, okay? We were able this year to bless 22 families with baskets. So tonight, I have 13 that need to be delivered. So if 13 of you will come to the back, they're all right here in Waycross. Um, grab a box. The names are taped to them. The address is on it. Their phone number's on it. And all you have to do is take it and deliver it. So if 13 of you will please volunteer to do that, we can get those gone. Also, I need the entire church, the entire church, to go down there with Miss Nona and help her take this Christmas down. If you will come, I promise you it takes maybe 10 minutes if we could get everybody down there and start an assembly line. It will not take us long. Please don't be one of those people who say, well, I'm going home because everybody else can do it. Me and Chris have been here all day long. I'm tired. I'm ready to go home. We've been doing baskets all day. Miss Nona needs to get back to Farrell. So please, drive down there, help us out. I promise you it won't take 10 minutes. Guys here, I need you to come back here to the back with me and help me help some of these take these boxes to their cars because they're kind of heavy. Please, okay. Nona's going down to the fellowship hall, not the bus barn, the fellowship hall. Uh, the baskets are right here in the social hall kitchen. Okay. All right. Well, I guess y'all heard that. I was told tonight that we were limited on time, so that's the message. <laughs> Amen. Don't have that much. <laughs> that's right. But it is good to be in the house of the Lord. And we had a wonderful time this morning, and also <clears throat> we had a wonderful lunch. In fact, I'm still enjoying it. <laughs> and so that may be one reason why the sermon's going to be that short. 
But we appreciate the goodness of God and His grace. I tell you what, it, it's nothing like, there's nothing like being around the people of God. I know the world I mentioned this morning may be chiding you about that or got their little sayings and all of these other little things. But understand, they've had the same ones since the fall. Nothing's changed. Don't get personal. Don't take it personal. Just understand that your Savior still lives. Amen. Praise God, and he's coming soon. Amen. Amen. But we are thankful for everyone, uh, really, that you, you're a blessing. I, I watched uh, the other night, I was privileged to be there, make the coffee, and I got one cup, but uh, I got to make the coffee and watched everybody as they worked. And Rhonda is not here even tonight. She was worn out. I went back there in the back, and everybody was out in the front, and she was sitting back there on a chair with her foot trying to prop it up, worn out. And I told her, I said, you need to go home. And she said, I can't. And I said, well, we need a second assistant and maybe a third assistant in here because that's a job. Sister Nolan and them, I tell you what, those de decorations were just unreal. I mean, beautiful. Amen. And I want to ask you, I know that she's not here tonight, but she'll probably for sure be here next week or maybe Wednesday. And if she is, go by. Hug her neck. Tell her how much you appreciate all the things that she's done because... That's a job. That's a job. And some of these I know uh, they helped their mother when she used to do all this. And you have to understand that mother did all of it. And uh, I, that was a, a, a marvel to me in the sense that there was another one that did the same thing that my wife did. And uh, when your pastor's wife goes with the territory. But, uh, and you don't have to be asked. You just go get it done. And that's the way it's done. But I want to speak for just a few moments here tonight. And uh, we're going to give you at least an hour before midnight. I know that some of y'all are looking for the great pumpkin to come out about 12. But... Uh, <laughs> We're going to try to get you out of here so you can get back home. But if you will, turn with, you, with me in your Bibles. And I, I'm going to be speaking uh, primarily out of Lamentations again. And this is over in the third chapter. In the third chapter of Lamentations. And I'm going to be reading, I meant to tell Dana that I'm going to be reading it and referring to some of that up all the way back up to chapter or verse 1 in this chapter. But my primary is going to be from 18 to 24. But Jeremiah, and as we had made mention before in there, sometimes things don't go like we think they should. Sometimes people think, well, I got saved, now everything's going to work out perfect. It doesn't. I don't have to worry about a thing. My life is scheduled, and I don't have to concern myself with anything. Oh, yes, you will. It's not what happens out here. It's what goes on in here. And that's what we're going to be talking about. My subject matter this, tonight would be continue in the faith. Continue in the faith. And the Bible just simply says, be ye faithful as he is faithful. God is faithful. He's made promises unto you that there will be nothing come upon you that you're not able to bear. 
Whatever it is with the problems that come by, he will offer you and give you an avenue of escape. You don't have to worry. I always think about God. I think about God in this term. He is steadfast. He's immutable. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And once you believed in him, whether it was 50 years ago or five minutes ago, you'll find out he never changes. You may change, but God never changes. And here we have Jeremiah, and Jeremiah, this is a book of lamentations. You know what lament, being lamentable is. And here that's exactly what Jeremiah was talking about in some of this, that he was lamentable about some of the things that had been going on and some of the things that had been happening uh, in his life. We would think that everything should be totally on the difference. But Jeremiah in the first verse said, I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me is he turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. He hath builded against me and compassed me about with gall and travail. He hath set me in a dark places as they that be dead of old. I know that everybody has at one time or the other felt the same thing. I'm just over here in despair and agony on me and there's nobody loves me and everybody hates me and I don't know what's going to happen and I, I have been trying to trust God and it's just not working out. Been there. I put my trust and my confidence in the Lord and then all of a sudden it's just not working. The Bible in one place says, wait upon the Lord. For he only renew your strength. Just wait on him. Be patient with God. You'll learn that through your trials and tribulations. All of these things turn around and work towards you learning patience in the Lord. Brother Danny can sit over here and be over here and just doom and gloom and I don't know what I'm going to do, and I'm hurting, and my neck, and, and I fell down, and, and I had a boo-boo, and I don't know what in the world we're going to do, and, but that's not the way that it goes. Praise God, you just turn around and say, I, but yeah, but I'm still serving the God who is faithful. Yeah. Amen? I, he is still faithful. Over in the 18th verse of that chapter, he said, and I said my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Good gracious alive. I'm in bad shape. Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. I put all of this together. And I looked at it and I, I began to compare what was happening in my life. I said, I don't really see a way out of this. But I began to compile all the things that were against me. My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I am at a, at a drawbridge. I don't know which way to go. I don't know the, the roadblocks are up. And everything is just saying turn around and forget about it. Throw in the towel. But I love this. He said, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. My soul looks at those things and is humbled in me. Why? Because there's the spirit of the living God that has never left you nor forsaken you. He's with you always. And when he turned around, he said, this I recall to my mind. Therefore... Have I ha hope? Praise God. 
I look at all the things that are out here and all the things that have gone amiss and all the things that have gone awry, but my soul goes back and I begin to remember all of those things, but I go back and I remember the times that God was there. I remember when God reached down and pulled me up. I remember when God placed that call to my life. I didn't want it, but I got it anyway. And praise God, I'm going to hold on to the very end because my soul has been restored and I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercy. Amen. Amen. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Praise God. You know what God's looking for? He's looking for someone that'll stand up and say, devil, you're a liar, the father of all lies, and I'm not going to believe one of your lies that you're trying to tell me. I'm going to stop everything. I'm going to turn back around. I'm going to say, get behind me. And I'm going to look towards the mountains where my strength comes from. And I'm going to receive from God that blessing that is already rolling down that mountain. All I've got to do is just open up and receive what God has got for me. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to be caught in this trap. Oh, yes, amen. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. God is compassionate towards his children. Amen. I thank God. The devil went after Job. But God, see, had confidence in what Job could do. The devil tried everything. But God knew Job. And when the things are coming against you and the fiery trials are flying against you, Stand back and say, devil, I don't know how much more I'm going to be able to stand, but my God has it all under control. And when it gets to that point, he'll call you to stop, stop, and he'll rebuke you away from my life, and the heavenly blessings will pour down. Job had a lot when he got there, but praise God, when it was all over, he had tenfold more than he ever started with. Amen. Amen. The devil's a liar. If he can convince you that everything is falling apart, that's exactly what he's going to do. And then listen to him. They are new every morning. I love that scripture. Praise God, the mercies of God. Praise God. If you go back, I look, and I try to think about the things of the morning. Praise the Lord. The manna came down from heaven fresh every morning and it laid out there on the plain and all the people had to do was go out there and scoop up all that they needed and they were supplied every part of them that they could have looked back and said we don't have all these things. We don't have fields. We don't have uh, flocks and all of these other things. No, but God every morning poured out out of his mercies that manna from heaven. I don't know what it was. One day we're going to see the Ark of the Covenant because inside of it there's manna. Praise God. And what God has put in there has not spoiled. It'll still be there. We're going to know the mercies of God. I don't have to see that to know the mercy of God in my life. Why? Because every morning that I get up, I have a refreshing of his goodness, of his hope, of his blessing pour it out into my life. I don't stand back and say, I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. No, sir. No, sir. God has already supplied my need according to his riches and glory. These mercies, the Bible says, they are new every morning. And then he followed it up. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Amen. We sing that song sometimes, Great is Thy Faithfulness. That's where it came from. His mercies every morning are poured out afresh and new into our life. We don't have to go out and hunt for it. It's laid outside of the door. Just go out there 
and enjoy the blessing of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. What about ever? We're, we're in the desert. Yeah, you're in the desert. You got to get up and move. You got to go travel across that desert. Amen. You're going to have some hard times. You're going to have some troubles and trials. But the mercies of God, praise the Lord, they're fresh every morning. When you get up, just get up in the morning, have a song in your heart, have a prayer on your heart, have a thanksgiving on your heart, turn your face towards heaven and begin to praise and magnify the glorious God above. Why? Because he has already sustained your day. Whatever it is that you have need of, God has already seen it, and the mercy blessings are already flowing. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I didn't have to preach that long. Amen. But great is thy faithfulness, Lord, because the Lord is my portion, he said, saith my soul. The Lord is my portion. Amen. Brother Clark, how much money you got on you? Broke. That's not my portion. My portion belongs to the Lord. It's him. Praise God. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Nothing but the promise of God. I have got secured in Jesus Christ. My soul is rejoicing because of him. Over in the fifth chapter of Romans, we're going to read a few scriptures and then we'll close. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're looking for our redeemer, redemption. There it is. We're justified by the faith that we have placed in Jesus Christ. We preach the cross. Paul said, I don't know nothing but the cross of Christ. Why? Because it was on that old rugged cross that my Savior gave himself for me. It was on that old cross that the blood flowed down and healed the land. Praise God. It was from the blood of that old cross that God looked into my life and washed away all of my sin. It was from that old cross that I look up and I'm going to live. Why? Because I know the one who died there. I know the one that, that gave himself for me, a living sacrifice, praise God, that I might have life and that I might have it more abundantly. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen. Praise God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation Worketh patience. We need to learn to be patient and wait. Wait upon the Lord. Praise God. And you're going to renew your strength. Don't worry about it. Just wait on the Lord. That renewal is coming. And I don't just go wandering off out here going fishing or hunting and say, I'm waiting on the Lord. No, that's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about being patient with God. Lord, you know my heart. Lord, you know my life. As that man that stood there at that altar and smote himself upon the breast, Father, forgive me a sinner. Forgive me a sinner. I am a sinner. Lord, look into my heart and look into my life. And God, give me your grace and mercy. But Lord, let me tell you what's happening on the inside. As I turn my face towards you and I be called and begin to call in your name, there's a hope that is resounding down in the depths and the recesses of my being. And that hope is beginning to shout out, praise God, praise God, praise God. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that 
which I have committed unto him against that day. I know God. Why? Because I have waited upon the Lord and I know that he knows me and he'll not allow anything to come against me to, to win. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation work of patience and patience experience and experience hope. If you've never had a trial, if you've never had a trial, you don't know patience. You don't know that tribulation, that work of patience, but that patience works experience. Amen. I wonder how that they can go through that and go through all the problems that they're having and still trust God. It's very simple. They didn't learn this yesterday. They've been practicing this year after year. All the times you thought that they were knocking the chandeliers out of the top of the church, there was a fight going on. There was a warfare going on. But praise God, they still had the joy of knowing the Lord. And that patience works that experience, and that experience spells hope. Praise God. I know. Praise the Lord. I can believe God. I can trust God above everything else. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Praise the Lord. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, but for your venture, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah lamenting all the things that had been happening to him. And he felt despair. But when he put it all together down in here, all of a sudden he said, you know something? My God is real. I have a deliverer. I have one that sees my need. And he is answering already. While I'm over here complaining, He's standing there with the answer. My hope is secure in Jesus Christ. Amen. You have a need tonight. The devil's been afflicted in your life. Tell him he's a liar. That's all he's, his affliction is a lie. It's a lie. Whatever it is, it's a lie. If his mouth's moving, he's lying. That's the way it works. But we can have confidence in the truth that is in Jesus. I am a present help in trouble. Amen. I am that present help in trouble. Believe God. Turn everything else off. Trust the Lord. Believe in him. Because he has all things in the palm of his hand. Amen. He sees your life from the day that you were born to the day that you came to an altar of prayer and asked him to forgive you of your sin and to be the Lord of your life. And if you've carried that faithfully, he's been faithful. The troubles of trials of time and of this world are many. But thank God I have a Savior. He's sitting there at the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high, making intercession, Brother Jimmy, for me every day. Every day. I keep him pretty busy. But he's glad to do it. And I'm thankful. Praise God. Let's be faithful. Let's be faithful. Father God in heaven, I thank you for your people. I thank you for your word. 
I thank you, God, that you are our strength, our fortress, and our high tower. Lord, I thank you that, Master, that whatever the problems may be in our life, that, Lord, that you have them all under your control. Lord, you've already spoken the deliverance that we need. And, Father, we're believing you and claiming your glory. For, Lord, you are our hope. And without you, we have nothing. But, Lord, I ask you right now to bless, watch over those that are delivering tonight. and Bless those families. Let it be a blessing. Let them know thanksgiving. Not just a turkey, but thanksgiving unto God. Father, we bless you right now, and we thank you for all that you have done. Father, we thank you for all the things that you are doing and all the things that you are going to do. And Lord, we ask for your blessing right now in Jesus' loving and holy name, to your glory and honor. Amen.